subscribe, please. Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I am here with the next park, part, excuse me, of Frank Chadwick's Thunder in the East. Gotta say, uh, first turn was quite exciting. We just finished that up. We're getting ready to pick back up with the start of the second turn. And for those of you who missed it, I actually have a quick little recap here of the first turn. I'll go ahead and play that for you now. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh, shit. Oh. Near the entrance has a shotgun. White male, 30s, long hair. Mama don't like tattletales. Wearing sunglasses. It's the motherfucking Eagle Double G. Snoop Dogg! You know what happened with the D R E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys got a kick out of that one. I had a little fun making it myself. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get uh, started here. We're going to pick back up, like I said, with the start of the uh, first turn here, or the second turn, rather. I uh, wanted to show you guys a couple of neat little things. I actually got this neat set of, you know, high-end dice, let me pull them apart here, that I'm actually going to be using on this uh, playthrough now, just because they're so awesome. They're uh, gravity dice. So I think you can actually buy these from Lock and Load. I don't know if they're directly selling them yet or not, but I think they will be. Uh, but these things are just freaking awesome. So I'm just gonna use those on this because <laughs> these dice are just awesome as hell. Uh, one other thing, Alan was nice enough to point out something that I had missed. I had questioned about it with Romania and Hungary down over here to the right, because I was saying how, you know, if there's something holding the Russians back, I missed it. I know there was stuff holding uh, the Romanians back and stuff like that, but I had missed about the Russians and he actually pointed it out for me. It is right here, page six of your uh, scenario booklet, right under frontline forces. It talks about uh, you must cover those borders, but you cannot enter those countries, project a zone of control, or attack across the borders until July 1st, which we actually didn't hit until now. Uh, so, Technically, I shouldn't have attacked there, but since we've already done that and we're already past that point and we were one turn ahead, we're not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna keep on going where we are. And this way you guys get to kind of learn from my mistakes as we go through. And one of the things is like, uh, one of the complaints I've heard from people with games of this size when you get into monsters is they're afraid to try it because they feel like they're gonna make mistakes. I I've said it before, I'll say it again. Don't let it hold you back. You're going to make mistakes with any game that you play. It's just part of the nature of it. Uh, don't let it hold you back from something large and fun like this because you think you're going to be making errors. Everyone's going to make errors. Hell, the guy who made the game makes errors occasionally when he plays it, I bet. It's just going to happen. Don't let it hold you back from a neat, awesome experience like this. So we did pick up on that, and I think that covers everything starting out. So let's take and jump in here with the start of our second turn. Now, Blitzkrieg is over, okay? So we're not gaining any of those benefits anymore. Uh, this is gonna be less of a punchy turn than the previous one was, so we're gonna have to take that into account. The Russians aren't on the back foot as much as they were uh, previously, but we did knock them back a fair uh, bit of it, and you can see there's actually a line there that I was able to reform with the Russian units. So we'll see if we can punch through that one. We're gonna start back up with our logistics phase. They don't have any isolated HQs and mark opponents unsupplied uh, and isolated units. That is something that we are going to have to look at here. Let me find my little bowl that has it. Let's see, is it this one? Yeah, here we go. 
out of supply, out of communication. Is that what that says? Isolated, okay. So we've got our out of supply. I love these little printed balls. Again, get a 3D printer if you haven't got one. Friggin' awesome. Now let's take a look here and see if we've got any of them. Okay, I know this one. He is isolated. He's definitely isolated because he's surrounded. I think the rest of them got out enough that they've got a line of communication. He's got a line of communication. He's got a line. They've got lines. They've got lines. They've all got lines. This one got a line. There was one down over here, but I think he died in the previous turn. And there's none over on this border because that's all still open. So they only have uh, one unit that is isolated. So that takes care of that. Good deal there. Let's take and keep on marching here. Not as bad for the Russians. I thought I had more of the, uh, the Russian units surrounded than that, but I guess they were able to break out through some of those holdings that we had. And I've got this card in my hand just to remind me that we're playing this card here in a little bit. Okay. Da -da -da. Roll for attrition of opponent's isolated units. Okay, so I haven't done attrition yet. Let me take and uh, read that over one more time just to make sure I got it, and then we'll take and run it real quick. Okay, so I went and looked it up real quick, and when you have an isolated unit like we do here, you're gonna take and roll once for the hex. So if there was more than one unit in that hex, you would only roll one time. You're not gonna roll uh, per unit, all right? So just once per each individual hex. And on a one, two, or three, the unit uh, one step loss is incurred by units in the hex, not every unit in the hex. And four or five or six, the unit is good. So. There is a chance that this 8-4 unit will be reduced during this step. So let's take and roll for it with our new high-speed, low-drag dice here real quick. Come on, let's see what we get. Five. Oh, damn. I was hoping he would get reduced since that's one of the uh, army units. But that is all right. We will keep on going. Well, he's going to get smashed anyway, so it's not like a, it's that big of a deal, but it would have made it easier. Okay, so... We have roll for our isolated units. Uh, we don't have to worry about yellow. Okay, we're into our repair and recovery steps. The Germans so far do not have any of these uh, countdown markers yet, but there was one thing I was wanting to go ahead and address, and this is actually at the end of the order of battle. So I'm gonna go ahead and address this now while I'm thinking of it and talking about countdown markers. A little out of turn. I have this other card that I started with, okay, for the Germans. I'm gonna be using this card this turn during your HQ mode step, which is uh, at the end of the order of battle step, you, uh, uh, to increase the attack support shifts of one German HQ marker in attack mode by one, blah, 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 or maintain up to two German HQ markers already in attack mode for free. You remember, you've got to pay offensive points to take and put these HQs into attack mode. Well, two of these buggers are already in attack mode. This card is ready made for this. I've got two ready to go. I get to play this card. So I'm taking in boom and uh, putting it there. Like I said, uh, we're, normally we would address this later on, but we were talking about countdown markers and it was in my head, so I want to address it. And one of the other things I get to do from my order of battle step, which we're actually on to here in just a second, is drawing another card, either one major or two minor. And I went ahead and got one of these, which if you discard it during your order of battle step, you can place one HQ marker from your force pool onto the map for free at no resource point cost, but you still get the uh, negative three countdown. Well, that doesn't really help me much because I'm not going to have another HQ for a while, but it has the or on there that if it's already on the map, immediately remove its countdown marker. Well, you guys can see the line is starting to stretch just a little bit, and I'm going to have another turn because after this turn, these things are going to flip back over into balance mode, and they're going to have a range of eight, and we're going to take some of these cities here in the front, and when we take these cities, 
these HQs are going to want to move up all right, somewhere in this range. So this will give me the ability to have one of them at least already good to go without that negative three countdown. And if I put it over here towards the center somewhere, you know, maybe here, it can cover out in a good long radius, giving the chance for the other HQs to take and move up and still have my unit supplied while they're cooking down. So I thought this would be a good one to go with uh, for later. Like I said, sorry we're covering that a little out of turn, but I wanted to go ahead and get those cards out of my hand and uh, taken care of. All right, so that, no countdowns to worry about yet, but we'll be dealing with those later. Now we're into our ready fly, uh, fly mode and everything, and we do have some aircraft to cover. So give me a sec, I'm gonna pan the camera over because it's a little ways off the map. But what we're gonna be doing is we're going to basically be bumping things back up the board. Recover our flown aircraft to available, flip our damaged aircraft, you know, and so on stuff uh, going on over there. The Soviets have a little bit different way that they handle these things, but uh, we'll deal with that on a Soviet turn. Give me one second, let me grab a camera. Okay, sorry I'm just holding it, but again, I'm over here tucking this side. There's so many things to keep track of that I've got it all uh, spread around the room. But this is again my uh, plane mat where I'm keeping track of all the different units. So these are going to be moved up the board. This is what we're doing. So these are my leftovers from the first turn. You can see the Soviets didn't have any to use. This whole stack gets to come up because they're already in the flown box. And then you remember I had one that was damaged. I get to take and flip that one over. So on the following turn, it gets to go up. This is like I was telling you guys before, the farther down and flipped over your airplanes are, the longer it's gonna take you to get it back up here to the top. I'm also going to be spending one fuel point to take and move this aircraft up, this Hungarian aircraft up uh, into the flown box. So next turn, it can come up there. So that takes care of that. Let's take and pan back over to the board and see what we got going on. Okay, we're back over here to the mat. Let's take and keep going here. We got through our blue part, taking and moving our aircraft up, spending our fuel points to take and move the ones from the very bottom on up. Not worrying about our yellow yet. Now we're officially into our order of battle step, which is where you start drawing your cards and all the other good stuff. And do keep in mind about the first week only uh, stipulation that does come into effect. Select up to one major or two minor cards. We can do this because this was the first week of the month. All right, so keep that in mind as well. We don't have any withdrawals or substitutions that we're doing this uh, month right now. Uh, place reinforcements as instructed. Place one and improve defense. Okay, we did buy some units and we've upgraded some units that we had some damage done with. We don't have a whole lot of points to spend because of that speed limit. Okay, and we already determined our HQs. We'll take and touch on that again real quick. And I went ahead and made sure to grab my one free improved position marker, which for giggles, I'm going to take and set over here just to ensure that this 8-4 has a harder time if it tries to snake in behind me. All right, so what I did was we had our one down over here, our Panzer, which took damage. It was originally a 1296. It took damage, uh, a step loss as we were pushing up in that direction. It was unfortunate and prevented me from getting another full Panzer army to just get the, the damage across, just to smash, uh, smash faces. So part of my resource points is going towards this. I'm uh, reinforcing this unit back up to a 1296. So I've got two of them in that hex. I'll have that uh, help with an attack, but I'm gonna leave them in the same hex. No matter what happens, they're gonna stay together, okay? So unless they get a breakthrough where they get to move together, they're probably gonna stay there and then uh, get turned into a full Panzer army that I'll get to use. That way I'll end up having a couple of Panzer armies over here, a couple over here, and I can kind of smash my way up and try to pinch around the Russian units as we go. I also got a couple of cores here, infantry cores, and the full side is a 464 unit, 
but you can't take and put it on there. You can only buy it as a one step unit and then take and upgrade it later on. So I'm gonna take and upgrade that. Or should I, did I have something else that was reduced? Maybe I should have spent that. I think I had another one over here that was reduced that I'm not seeing. Is there, yep, there's one right there. Okay, we're gonna do one unit, excuse me. I'm gonna change this up. We're gonna do one unit as a 464, and we're gonna spend that other point taking and flipping this unit over as well. One that we've already got in combat. Get over here, you little bastard. You'll go there, you'll go back there. And I wanted this to kind of plug a hole because I'm getting a hole over here, but I forgot I had that unit that was tucked underneath that HQ. I should have moved it up previously. So what's the closest that I can get? I don't think I've got any other cities close by. I guess this would be the closest and I can move it up some. Yeah, because the special movement phase is next. If I could move this up out of the way, I could move the other one there, but I'm not gonna be able to do it, but I'll move them both up. So we'll take and yeah, we'll put it here in this city here with this garrison and have it move over. And my thought process is on the next turn, I'll take and put points towards flipping that unit over. So it'll be a full 464 unit taking and helping to kind of fill in some of these uh, gaps that we got going on. And I'd like to get one more unit over here just to kind of help out because this is spreading out a little bit farther than I would like, but we'll see how it pans out. All right, so I reinforced, reinforced, put a unit on the board. Uh, we're good. Spent my points. Let's see. Put on my improved defense. Let's make sure we're not forgetting anything. Purchase units. We did take care of our speed limit. Uh, one personnel point. A specialist. We don't have any specialists to build, I don't think, right now. So that's not going to be uh, anything to worry about. And like I said, our HQ mode, we are spending that card to keep these two HQs into their attack mode. So one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. They're still covering all these units, right? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. All right, so we're getting a lot of, we've got a fair bit of supply range, but they're still able to get that free attack shift all across the board. So I've got two turns where I'm getting that free attack shift uh, thanks to that card pretty much across my entire line. So this is excellent for me on this. Okay, so we will handle our special movement phase and then probably call it for this video and we'll pick up with the totality of the combat phase. All right, remember for our special movement phase, you can't move if you're in a zone of control. Infantry can only move half and uh, mechanical can move their full distance. Let's see who wants to move. I definitely want to move this one up because I want to plug some gaps, like I said. One, two, we'll bring this one over. One, don't want to go two, one, two. It really doesn't matter. Go there. And again, this minor river isn't affecting his movement. All right, so those two guys, let me take and keep them oriented the right way. Again, I say the right way, but the bottom of the table is over there. And just because of where I'm having all the combat, I'm having to film from the side. Okay, do we have anyone else we want to move up? Yes, I want to get some of these units over here. This Panzer unit. Well, if I pull him out and around, I can take and smash into this guy and start opening this up. I could have a 48 attack against that one, or I could have these two just smash their way through and fully push this open. And then the remaining units could attack this eight, four. Let's see, six, six, four, and then, ooh, okay, that's a six. We want him on top. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking my strategies through. I know some of you guys are going, you moron, don't do that. But I'm looking at this. Okay, that would give me 18, 18 to eight. Uh, that's two to one. Two to one, naturally. Three to one with the combat shift and I could put some air power towards it. So I'd have three to one. Uh, 
<laughs> Ooh, I can move this guy up. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have this uh, Panzer Army go one, two, and three. And yes, he's entering a zone of control, but he's a heavy unit, so he gets to keep going if he wants to. So he's going up to here to take and push on. This one's gonna move up to give me extra uh, firepower. That will give me three to one right off the bat against this 8-4 that's isolated. And then we can have this Panzer Army attack out. We can have this Panzer Army attack out. I would like to take and get, ooh, I can get this one over as well. He can spend half movement points to go over so we can get even more factors against him. I like that. We'll move this guy up as well so he can attack into this mechanized unit. And we'll have this one move over to attack there. This one move up for one point. Do we have anyone else want to move up? That got knocked off, so put that right back there where it goes. That's the one thing I hate about these like tight counter games is shit gets knocked around. This Panzer Army is going to be staying. These guys are doing damage there. We'll take and move this 6-4 over to here. Oh, and that's a mountain 6-4. He can take and cut across there and start doing damage. So yeah, we'll have him go here and here. So one can attack one direction. So I can have the mountain guys attack across the mountain. These guys can attack there. And then this one will take and move up to here. And that way they're surrounding this mechanized. We'll kill this mechanized off. We'll have these Panzer armies take and put some hurt onto this guy to take. There is a victory point right there underneath that hex as well. Where else are we going? He's going out, he's going out, he's going out. Do we have anyone else we wanna move up? He could only move up one. We'll have him move up the one. And he could move over one, one. Yeah, there we go. We got this guy surrounded. We can push him off. He has to move to there and stop. He has to move. Oh, I've got another reduced unit. That's fine though, we'll deal with that later. So I can surround this one, I can put some hurt onto him or I can put some hurt there. Okay, I think I've got all the moves done that I wanna do. You guys see I've kind of, wow, I've got this thing almost perfectly lined, look at that. Right there across the board, I like that. Basically my thought process is I've got some key units just surrounded and I can take and put uh, some hurt on some of these last remaining big army units. I can attack this one. I can attack this one. The, over here, it's probably going to be one or the other. I can't really put the hurt on both of them. This one's already reduced, so I can attack it with the Panzer Army at four to one, five to one with the, uh, the bonus. So five to one natural against him. He's probably going to be smoked, or I could attack... Yeah, here, and then that one there. All of this is gonna go against this one isolated one. This guy's going there. I've already moved these guys up. Damn, I wanna get some help against that one because he's kind of alone. I don't know if I'll make that attack yet. I mean, it's three to one, four to one. Ooh, he's actually, I think he might be out of range. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, he's in range. So yeah, we'll go ahead and make that attack because he is in range of the extra bonus attack. I can throw some air power on that to help make up for the fact because that 8-4 unit, uh, the Russian 8-4 right there, he's in a forest hex, which we remember from previously is going to give us a one negative shift. So we're going to have to account for that when we're conducting our next attack. And then over here, I'm kind of looking at these guys as like a holding action. These few that are here can attack this uh remaining mechanized unit, get it off the board. The rest are just kind of in the way of this uh, Russian army unit. And like I was saying previously, 
I can take out this mechanized unit and then get this victory hex as well, put a lot of hurt down range, and then the next turn I'll probably go after this 8-4 that's cleaned itself up here. If this, if this line of attacks goes well, then I would clear out pretty much everything along this like first line that they kind of built up, which would not leave them a lot. Plus I would have a big hole right here uh, from knocking these guys down that I could slam a couple of uh, Panzer Army units through. And if I get those guys through, I'm kind of just debating, just slamming them as hard as they'll go for Moscow and saying to hell with um, supply, just see if you can, uh, oh no, I couldn't do that because it'd be too easy for the Russians to probably get them isolated if I wouldn't be able to get a line of communication. I'd have to make sure I have a hole here somewhere. Okay, yeah, I've been ranting here for a little bit. But that takes care of our special movement phase. I do believe we did all that. Soviets, we don't have to worry about. We're not relocating any of our HQs, but we will be doing that soon. So we'll pick up on the next video with our combat phase where we're gonna be declaring attacks, which I almost just pretty much did there. But I've already got my aircraft stacked over here, uh, ready to go. I'm not gonna spread them out probably near as much as I did previously, because remember with Blitzkrieg, I already got one free die per attack, and now I'm not gonna be getting that. And for the crucial ones, I'm gonna want at least two dice, all right? Especially if it's a white uh, lightning bolt attack, because then you need two results to get the partial results, uh, stuff like that. We'll uh, go over it again in the next one, but I wanna have at least two dice to maximize my odds, because otherwise it's only like a one in six, or uh, what is it, like one in four chance or whatever of getting that odd shift, and I want to get the odd shift as much as possible if I'm risking my aircraft. But I went ahead and grabbed my escorts as well because the Russians get to take and use their aircraft this time, and they have a fair amount of uh, escort fighters that they can take and send to try to stop my bombers on this run. So we have to be prepared for that. So we're going to see some air-to-air -air combat as well uh, on the following video. All right, that's going to be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.